Welcome once again to The Lost Signals Discusses Games and Gaming Culture, a pretentious, philosophical, pedantic podcast where we focus on various aspects of video games as well as other issues and topics within gaming in general. Hello, and welcome back to The Lost Signals Discusses Games and Gaming Culture. As you can see, we are guarded against any and all kinds of plagues. I am Scott Thurlow, here with... Jonathan Ian Manzer. With my legally required mask. And Stephen Amosi. Hello. I'm here to either keep the plague out of me or rob you. I'm With not sure yet. Illegal looking mask, if you will. <laughs> and I yes. mean, you're, you're, a, you're a socially conscious uh, robber. You know, you don't want to get your victim sick. Yeah. You just want to take just the want some money here, man. That's right. That's right. A true Robin Hood of the uh, <laughs> modern age, if you will. And yes, we're going to discuss games that either like. I guess feature plagues and or viruses as like a central conceit or at least have them as an integral part of the story and or mechanics. So there's not that many, but with that, um, I think he has a couple that he wants to uh, start off with. So what do you got there? Dr. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That is a very good one. That was a game that I used to play all the time on days that I was home sick from school. <laughs> Super fitting then. Yeah. And who knows, perhaps it was getting you sick in order to <laughs> play it more. Uh, hey. But uh, what came to mind when we first discussed this topic was Plague Tale Innocence. Of course, yeah. Which One is dealing with the, the Black for us, yeah. Plague and uh, specifically the rat born uh, aspect of it, even though mm-hmm. the rats in there are. There's a bit of a yeah, not, not not element there, yeah. but still. And I also want to bring up uh, quickly Vampire, which yeah. I also recently played, which goes with the Spanish flu. Yes. Yeah. So, like, actually, it's funny because I remember you recommending, like, you played it first. It mm-hmm. came out, like, not like two or three years ago at Max. And uh, you, know, you were like, oh, by the way, it's in London in 1917 or 18. And you're, you're a doctor and the Spanish flu is happening. And also you're a vampire. So it's like both. It has mm-hmm. two, like, a real you know, world setting plague um, pandemic. And also a supernatural one, you know, like a, a fantastical one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, very good call. And I didn't think about that one. So I'll throw a couple. Um, one I want to save for later, but I thought of it just uh, before I started as well. Dishonored, the series, also features a rat-born plague that's like vaguely supernatural kind of in nature, but also naturalistic as well. So that was a pretty good one that I didn't uh, realize at first. And which you can actually use like uh, one of your powers eventually is to summon a bunch of a rat swarm to eat people. Same in Plague Tale. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess because of the the actual bubonic plague from actual medieval history, that like, of course, it's associated with those animals. So, games who are going to do that almost, I guess, feel compelled or obliged to include that in mm-hmm. some way as a mechanic. So, what do you got, Sivo? What's your uh, play game or two? Uh, well, like like both of you guys, I did recently play Plague Tale as well, and that game is just awesome. So. I highly recommend everybody check that one out. But um, one that I wanted to mention was a game that I played most of uh, a couple years ago, Bloodborne. Oh, nice. Nice call. Yeah, yeah. You know, focused around a, like, Bloodborne disease. (laughs) It's one of the, you know, from software games. So um, it's kind of like a Victorian era era, uh, alternate reality uh, fun. I mean, it's, so like, it's got a lot, like, not a lot, but some Lovecraftian elements, but filtered through that kind of framework, like you were saying. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good one. Um, I know there's a couple more that you'll probably mention, Scott. Uh, yep, I got you. There was nothing else that was like that jumped out at you off the uh, maybe Left for Dead. Uh, yeah. I mean, so like, I'm going to lump any zombie game like. Uh, even above that, Sivo, you guys might say Res Evil, of course, because yeah. every single game, of course, is about like T or C or V, whatever fucking virus it is in any given one. Right. Sure. You're so angry about that naming system <laughs> in Resident Evil. It's yeah. just so fucking random. Like, all right, listen, uh, my uh, academic talk about pop culture this year was going to be centered on Res Evil, so I'll expand later. But yeah, of course, like it is a framework for it. There's another good one or... Similar is Last of Us. That's also featuring a plague. If, mm-hmm. if, and the sequel is coming out soon. 
uh, in, a, in a month or two. So, what, but I wanted to mention, um, there is one, you might have heard of it, Steve-O, and possibly you, E, but I think Steve-O might have heard it first, was Plague Incorporated. Yeah. which is actually like an RTS. It, originally, it was called a, a fucking Flash game from probably like Congregate or like Newgrounds or something called Pandemic 2 that basically like, I looked up the history. It's kind of interesting. I'll try to like condense it real quick. Um, a develop, like a small indie developer, like one guy was like, oh, this is a pretty cool game. Like you could probably expand it with like a better engine and so forth. So years later, he like reached out to the original like creators of a Pandemic mm-hmm. and asked them if, they, if he could like, use the IP and use like the core stuff to expand it into Plague Incorporated. And it became like a, a re- like an R- it's basically an RTS strategy. That's interesting. Game. Cause I used to play that game all the time back yeah. in the day. And like, it was a fun little flash game, but I, I'm, I never played Plague Inc. Yeah. So like, so originally of course you almost play like as the virus, like your RTS is like to spread it to amongst as many humans as possible. Yeah. Oh, just like my real life yeah. with the uh, convent. But then, like, and then because of because of the current circumstances of the uh, C virus, if you will, of the C nineteen virus, so he added a mode where, in fact, you play it now as the doctors who are trying to like suppress it, like as fast as possible, mm-hmm. like in the best way. So that was pretty neat. But yeah, that's the history of it, and that's of course one of the big ones, and is legitimately named Plague Incorporated. So you can't not mention it, really. Interesting. Um, there's yeah. one. There's one called uh, so Days Gone. I played that like a year or two ago, and it was on my not top games, but um, solid honorable mention games. Again, zombie ish, like anything like that, similar to Last of Us. Even there is also um, one called I bought it like for five dollars, like, right before the new year, called uh, Plague Road. And would you play as a plague doctor with like the oh, the do- you know the beak mask? Nice. It's sort of like <laughs> sort of like steampunky world and um, like turn-based strategy but then like there's also like a base building component to it which is kind of cool so yeah, like there's actually what's funny is like there's not that many really like overall if we discount many zombie games that feature like for example something like vampire well if i if i want to bring it up it's that in video games specifically you need to have some sort of enemy to fight True. and microbial organisms <laughs> unless you're dr mario and he's the only one who really can get away with it perhaps some uh, medical simulation they should do like an inner space game <laughs> or like you're you're fighting a, a virus but like human-sized germs i guess or something yeah. like that true but, but that's right. why in a sense you often need to have I, uh, an antagonist creating the virus mm, yeah. so in vampire it was one of the major vampire demons that was like a, almost a darth plagueis type character yeah, yeah. uh and you have those uh, or you have i actually think that zombies in a sense are often times the most realistic portrayal of an enemy that you can fight that is a representation of the plague as opposed to a uh a malevolent figure causing the plague right yeah that's very fair that's a very good point yeah it just seems like it's not it, it on the surface it seems like oh i can name so many games that feature like yeah, surfacely you can, like, on the very basic level of it. But really, I think you're right, like, because of the way... It even works in films, in any story, right? Mm-hmm. You need... Oftentimes, we need to feel as if we are have um, something tangential, corporeal, to fight against. Otherwise, like, you know, again, like, um, we just recently... Uh, when this episode releases earlier, 12 Monkeys should have come out, like, we're, I'm fighting what hunt? What germs? Like, how the fuck am I going <laughs> to fight germs, right? Like, it's something like that. Yeah. But... I kind of like waited to all this to lead into a game that I want to speak a bit, a bit about a length to try to convince you guys. And those of you out there listening to check out it is called pathologic two, which is a, not quite a sequel. Um, the original pathologic was like a 2002 or five PC game from a very small Russian developer, Russian based developer. And it's sort of a cult classic. So they redid it um, like HD, it, uh, you know, put, put a nice fresh treatment on it, expanded things that they couldn't have, um, were not able to do in the original and re-released it as a console port. And I played it right. Like it dropped about two weeks before the actual onset of the real life, like uh, quarantine pandemic. So like right after my birthday, I bought it and I just fell into it. Now I will say this, it has some jankiness to it. There's some technical issues. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it is noticeable. (laughs) No, John Wick. Do you see that the gameplay is infectious? Uh, Kind of. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, I would. And I do like that. But the framework is, it's sort of like an anachronistic, like, 19, like 1910s, 1915 Russian, small Russian town slash village that's being ravaged by a disease. 
and you are a local doctor coming back to town and trying to figure it all out. And the gameplay loop like feeds into that. Like you can get infected and you probably will easily. Like <laughs> you're not immune to it at all. Right. But the way it works mechanically is that that means now that you're trying to keep yourself alive. But there's other meters too. There's fucking, it's a survival kind of like um, first person survival. Uh, some, not even horror really, just survival scavenging. But you got hunger, thirst, uh, stamina, all that uh, sleep, exhaustion, I believe is, is what it is. So if you get infected enough, that means you're like, you know what? Sorry, random citizen or sorry, NPC that um, I've grown attached to. I need this fucking shit to save myself to survive the next fucking hour. Like, it's intense. Like, it makes you feel that you are just helpless within the game world. Like, it depowers you. Well, and that's what great, and survival game. games are all yeah. about, though. I think, but it, it does it in such a perfect way. Look, good. how can we not have mentioned Oregon Trail, <laughs> which <laughs> taught every one that of our generation about dysentery. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually got dysentery. Cholera. From eating too many coconuts in Stranded Deep recently. So, yep. um, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, Stranded Deep is another video game. Yeah. Yeah, I got uh, a diarrhea from them, and I just drained all the water from uh, my body, and I uh, died. But <laughs> the thing is, like, survival actually does show. Sure. It's interesting. It's, it, it's a difference between the enemy being the disease, the disease being an effect of the circumstances of the game, yeah, I think that's a good or. Point. Uh, you have like real time strategies, which will have an event be the disease, right. and you know, but it's kind of uh, like Plague Tale almost seems that like it falls into that idea that there's a story going on and it happens to take place during the plague, and that that the plague itself is is in fact. Uh, I think that's you're right. It's a very important subtle difference, and when handled well, like it's impactful. Mm -hmm. Where when the opposite end of the scale, it's you're just gonna be like it's you you're desensitized to it, I think, or it's not as meaningful because. It just is in the background and therefore isn't, it's not, you don't connect to it. Is there going to be Assassin's Creed Black Death? Uh, I certainly hope so. Like, I, what's funny is like, I thought the original one would, would be that because it was taking place through the Crusades, but it was one of the early Crusades, not, not the, um. Saladin. Mini, yeah, Saladin is coming. Saladin's coming, but Plague is not. Plague are not. Um, yeah. No, but like, they're, uh, Shannon Deep is funny that you mentioned that. Like, it's an indie-ish game that just came out that. <laughs> features like that like it's almost like an organ trail and, and and first person but yeah man i just I, i'm just gonna talk up a little bit more about pathologic 2 just to try to convince you to check it out because thematically it's got this haunting like framework to it where you're both within and without the town like it, I, I don't know how to describe it without spoiling like the the magic of it but at the core of it like you legit can't unless you fucking save scum the shit out of it, and even that is going to be like quite uh, um a hurdle. You you just you'll just watch townspeople die, and like the whole framework is um the, you get I believe it is twelve days, right? So at the end of every day in game, when the when the bell tolls and the, it tells you like X population died, X population committed suicide. Here's how many people are missing, right? It's just like the numbers just start become staggering, and it, I think it's very affecting. But it's hard to do that, I think. I think Vampire might be the second game that actually did that, like handled it well, and made you feel part of that world, made you feel as if you were <clears throat> trying to do the best you can, but you're just so overwhelmed because you're fighting an enemy that doesn't actually have a face and has no agenda, really. Mm -hmm. you know? Although they did give it a face with the sure, Vampire Sure, that's the supernatural part of it, right? Yeah. Like You're also dealing with an actual plague. <laughs> you're an actual doctor yeah. in 1918 trying to heal people. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I really want to give as much uh, as you're given uh, that, uh, the, the props that you're giving it. Uh, I really want to give uh, Plague Tale massive props. I think this is one of the most fun games I've played in a while. and actually got me back into, like, finishing. Like, it, it had been a little bit <laughs> since I finished uh -huh. a game before I played that uh, last year, I guess, or yep. um, two years ago, maybe. Came out in 19. Yeah. But, um it was just such an enjoyable experience, like a really well done story. That's not super hard, but not super easy either. No. And, um, just, uh, just a really cool world to go through. I guess maybe I shouldn't describe it like that in light of current, <laughs> but like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a really it's an effect fascinating, thing. like mix of the, of the real story of the bubonic plague and the, uh, supernatural elements that they add in. Um, 
yeah that probably even became part of like the legend of of stuff like that of of events like that you know like in in the in medieval times so i highly recommend plague tale if you're looking to play a game that's uh centered around you know kind of uh illnesses or or broadly like played. those types of times well it's interesting that you bring up uh because you already see in america the uh mythologizing of certain figures involved with the mm-hmm. uh of ours i think in the future that uh some of the leaders will be held to a higher uh uh maybe an unrealistic like yeah, depiction well i got i got takeout the other day and with my takeout i received a uh shirt that's like uh dr fauci in dr fauci dr fauci wants you to stay yeah. home dr, dr. fauci, dr. fauci. It's, it's it says uh should be uh, wearing it right now dr I fauci wants you to stay on your couchy and it's like in the simpsons style <laughs> yeah. on the couch like on the simpsons couch it's a great shirt <laughs> but like you know they're they're really there there is that like level of anytime something huge like this happens this level of like mythologizing the central characters whether for villainizing them or uh making them heroes you know sure yeah you're absolutely right but no i mean I, yeah i mean yes i of course i support talking up plague tale everyone if you haven't should definitely check it out i believe it's on sale uh, either on steam and also and or on ps4 right now but yeah it was <clears throat> like i said one of my uh, top games of last year and of course like like at the time i also mentioned yeah i'm biased for i i am fascinated by the history of you know 13 1400s Europe, when in fact, when the bubonic plague was devastating it. Mm-hmm. I find that shit fascinating. But there are other things too. Um, Ian and I also enjoyed the um, ancient Rome period in which there were plagues happening there, like, of course. Or you're just in it? Yeah, exactly. And um, there's one or two other ones. But yeah, but all I'm saying is like, I think um, Plague Tale was previous to Pathologic, and I know it came out before I just happened to play the port recently. Those two games, I think, use the element like the framework of plague and or virus to do something affecting to you as the player as you go through it and are really well written and just uh you know like they, they address that stuff without flinching from it but also mm-hmm. like making it accessible to to a degree like accessible in quotes i suppose so no like uh it's funny so uh just before pcast we we're looking up a couple other things there are certainly other games like steve you might um uh, recognize this one as well there's Deus Ex, like a couple other things where they had like, I guess I'll say plague-like events that yeah. happened during the course of the story, but were not necessarily the focal point nor like the central like framework for it either. Yeah, I, I agree. There are certainly those that like a medical, you know, um, emergency happens within the story but it's not like the story is about that i guess yeah exactly um so i i don't know i was trying to think of like other ones but i think most of them were taken i was going to mention deus ex if you didn't but i figured yeah. you're you're the one that really played that game so I, I would leave it to you um i didn't really see too many others that i had heard of or ever played or looked at you know like there are a couple other ones but i was like i don't even know this one, this game you know yeah i was trying to get it like there aren't like it seemingly aren't that many, so I just want to sort of take this opportunity because to talk up some of that word that did do it. Again, to go back to the point, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to do it. Fight. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's almost an existential problem, you know? Like, how do you. That can make certain types of villains if you're working on, like, almost day to level. So, Morrowind's very famous for this uh, kind of disease that spread throughout. That was, like, kind of uh, the main villain was spreading this out. But it adds to his level of uh, threat. Of villainy. In that. Uh, like, it's almost like having a villain that controls disease. Uh, I mean, that's one of the four horsemen there. Yeah, I think true. it's a uh, uh, just it. yeah, like a, a primal fear of ours. But I, but I do. I bet you, if we did this episode five years from now, there would be a whole bunch of other games that we could be talking about. At that's moment. interesting mm-hmm. because think, I think there will be a lot more that come out of this in the wake of this. Like people yeah. might be like trying to make a, something, that especially like indie it. games. People are going to be like trying to make something simple, like creative that no, lets I'm, them, I'm making, like, give them an outlet, you know, social distancing the game. Uh, you actually have to say six feet away from uh, all the other time. PCs. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah, I, I, I expect to see that type of thing. No, I think, I think it's a good point. Sivo. like 
that in the wake of it, you know, art, as art reflects possible, you know, real life circumstances that, like I said, even the, the one small thing where the pandemic designer was like, oh, let's, let's try to do something, po it, put a positive spin, let's reverse it. So you play, you know, again, now you're not the virus trying to spread, you're trying to stop the spread yeah. of the virus. And I think you're right. Like it'd be, I'm quite interested in seeing like what comes out of that sphere, you know, maybe six, eight uh, year down the line. It's going to be, it's going to be, I think really fascinating to see what kind of art, I mean, this is a more general thing than, than the plague, but like, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of art uh, comes out of this in general. And then also what kind of art has already come out of it that like we haven't recognized as like high art yet, you know, True. or like that'll yeah. become big in the next, because I think there's like, people doing all kinds of like really fascinating stuff you know all these uh musicians are putting on like free concerts on youtube and stuff and like you know there's all kinds of there was a concert uh, within Fortnite. Out. if you saw that right so yeah. like sort of coincides yeah Go on. yeah there's like all the, all this like really interesting things that are happening and i i'm i'm i'd like i you know i'll be interested to see if that type of thing continues on or if it be, can like if the art community converts back to kind of what it was pre plague or if it's forever changed, you know, well, the promo upcoming episode, because this is our plague month. Um, well, we're doing a philosophy detailing how different diseases have affected popular culture at that time. And how they uh, afterwards it. with both black right. plague, the Spanish flu, uh, typhoid. Woodstock happened during a, a pandemic, you know, Really? <laughs> yeah. So, like, there was a, a hundred thousand Americans died the the year that Woodstock Woodstock happened 67. from the uh, flu. Hmm. Um, I mean, it was like not you know it was it was a full year like this is, we're at, we're at eighty thousand after fucking two and a half months. So with this sure. thing, so like you're gonna win that bet. I yeah. know, I know, I know. Uh, but you know, it, it's it it's um. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens art wise in, in terms of this and, and, and just like the way that people live. I think that uh, people's lives are going to be changed forever, you know, like just their daily day to day, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that we're going to have a lot more germaphobes after this is done, you know, like stuff like that. <laughs> Should hope so. I'm, I'm guessing. So like, I, I'm hoping at least that many of us can now work from home in general, if you're in like a regular sphere like that, like even like, so I'll tie it back to at least to video games in general. There, surely there was like last of us was delayed twice once uh the second time because of of course the disruption <laughs> but i'm just saying like now that like many studios have had have of course been forced to have their employees work from home they're trying to find ways to work around like to get it done like to ship it and so forth so i think like that might, maybe like that will put alleviate some pressure on the crunch culture that's like, mm. also, like we're gonna do an episode on that for sure i'm not sure but i'm just saying like i'm just saying like if that is a somewhat of a subtle change, especially when you're working in, in an industry that, sure, if I've got my kit back at home, like why, there's no reason for me to go into an office or a building, right? Like I can do play testing, I can do my graphic design, whatever it may be in terms of making game without being in it, you know, it, all collecting in the physical, physically in the same place. Yeah. And and hopefully, all. hopefully, uh, you know, developers and, and just everybody in general, like, you know, uh, companies in general take a lesson from this and yeah. kind of future proof themselves against things where their employees are stuck at home or whatever. I just think America's going to learn a lesson from this. I'm not sure, but <laughs> cynically, but I know what you mean. We'll see. Perhaps some sectors will adopt it. That's all I'm saying. Um, and I'll give you one quick thing. I, I think I told you guys this before, but they are um, a Sobo, the studio who did Plague Tale did announce that like based on the reception, which was pretty solid that they're doing a sequel. Like this was announced yes. even, even before the COVID stuff was happening. Yeah. Like they just, they're like, yeah, we're doing it. Play Tale Two, COVID nineteen. I mean, I mean, the end was definitely sequel bait. They they wanted a sequel and like a little bit sure, but they weren't sure if that was going to happen, right? They weren't yeah. sure if they're going to recoup their expenses. Uh, I think when you see that game, like after you played it, you know, you're going, we got a hit here. Sure. Yeah. I, mean, I, I I like to think so, and like well, I, seemingly we're all definitely talking it up because that is the case because it was so well done. But I'm just saying, like. I'm excited to see maybe like this, these circumstances will change what they originally had in mind for the sequel. But either way, the fact that a sequel is happening, I think is a really good sign. Speaking of which, have you guys looked at the, the website for Plague Tale? I just went to go look it up and it's a while cool. back. I did like, yeah, actually. So what it was, Sivo, like you guys know, I often, what happens is when I get into a game, I'm like, oh, this game's really good. 
I'll try to look for wallpapers of it so I can throw it on my yeah. computer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I went to their site looking for some cool artwork. And actually, a lot of the fans are like in the wake of it, a lot of cool fan art came out that is really awesome. Like that looks really good and, and specifically designed for us uh, screensavers and so forth. Yeah. Let me, uh, since we can yeah. do this, since we have the technology, <laughs> let me really quickly share my screen and like show all the people what this website looks like because it's pretty cool. If that's, yeah, do it up. that's all right with you guys. Yeah, go for it, man. Yeah, like all I right. I don't know if I have much more to like point out like game wise at least, but you got something? To eat? We'll see uh, I pick. was gonna say something snarky, but go ahead. Right. <laughs> so like this is where you start and then you go down and it kind of like tells I mean, you can read all this. I would say just go and look at it yourself, but like as yeah. you go down, it goes like down to the street level and then um and underneath it, right? The yeah, and you still like you you know, you have all this like interesting stuff about the game itself and it's kind of a trailer in and of itself, just scrolling on the website. Highest really production cool. values of any podcast I've ever seen right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Not nuts, baby. And then, yeah, man. So like, there's the, there's the end trailer scene. <laughs> yeah. Like even that shot right there. Like, I think I had that possibly as one of my screen uh, wallpapers for a bit, but yeah, yeah man, like, I don't know. I, I do. I do think it's interesting because of the circumstances that in these studios might be working on stuff that, is going to address it or at least uh, has something to say and uses, uh, uses it as a core idea in some way, shape, or form. So, hmm. Yeah. I like that. I think I don't know, I'm thinking about uh, actually making that social distancing. Yeah, now, he's, now he's right in the corner. <laughs> <of> the <laughs> we should do right it. Now. We could make it like a little mobile game for that. Yeah, I think mobile would be a nice little test market for it. I got a bunch yeah, of skins sure. and stuff that I bought a little while ago. So if you need any uh, like 2D... <laughs> yeah uh game skins let me know oh but i just thought of one i forgot one. it's basically paper boy but um <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's, that's perfect mechanic yeah 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 it yeah, makes sense uh there's one real quick uh our friend mike geronda he's a big fan of the division games which i'm not so much i know they're ubisoft and all but uh the framework of it is that a man-made virus is translated, like transmitted via. They put it on money, like they basically spray the virus on all the money in America, and everybody <laughs> gets infected. And I thought it was like kind of a funny, like snarky commentary on capitalism, or like how it itself well, is a capitalism is the disease. <laughs> yeah, itself is a disease, of course. So, yeah, of course. I just remember that one at the very end here. But yeah, like I don't know. I, Video I do game workers of the world unite and take over. I do think it's interesting. Like, of course, given my personal history and interest in these things, and I am no virologist. I, you know, I am not an infectious disease expert or, by any means or anything. But I do think it's interesting because of going back to what you said, like it's difficult for us as humans to face a faceless enemy that, again, can't be bargained with, can't be reasoned with, et cetera, et cetera, right? So like, how do we face that, which we'll address, I think, much more in depth in the philosophy episode about mm -hmm. it. But I'm saying like how, how games have addressed it or at least used it as a springboard or framework to impart some thematic message uh, you know about humanity or about uh, our intersections with diseases how can we, how can we fight them if we can even fight them or just basically survive them you know like make make it through the wave of them mm. yeah but yeah i think if you take anything out from this do check out plague tale and do check out pathologic too absolutely yeah i mean i think that you you make um a good point there it, it is like this like eternal struggle of humanity uh, against like its own death and like its own death by little tiny what do you, little what? What do you call them germs <laughs> <laughs> it strips it strips us of the agency yep, we think yep. we do have mm -hmm. and it leaves us uh, vulnerable to the message that we are just but flesh that will fade one day yeah mm -hmm. and um, sometimes you need that reminder but it's not all that comforting but yet you know First of all, you have, you have to know, not fear, but know you're going to die. And then you can move on. Yep. All right. Well, I, I, I got nothing that. else. <laughs> yeah. Go play some plague games or, or don't if it's... Take out plague down. Don't really play right now. With you. Or play your own plague games. So, like, I wasn't sure how this month was going to go because uh, we're doing, like, all stuff based on, you know, plagues and viruses mm -hmm. and, and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, this might, like, set me off psychologically. But I've actually been... Uh, finding a little bit of comfort in these things. You know thy an enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for some people it is, it makes it worse. For some people it makes it better. And uh, for me so far anyway, it's been uh, 
it's been an interesting ride this month and, and I'm not having a bad time. So that's good. <laughs> well, I'm glad to, uh, to that being the case, but yeah, like, you know, shed some light on it, like confront it and perhaps you might, you'll come out with, in a, in, with a better mindset. Over and worst case, blame a uh, third party. Yeah. In Canada. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're doing China right now. So <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but Canada is yeah, yeah. obviously I'll, in short order. I'll bring it back to something like uh, when I took a couple of classes in college, I'll close up with this, about medieval history and when we covered the actual plague because of the you know, lack of knowledge in scientific uh, research, they thought God was shooting down visible arrows that contained the plague upon certain sections. So we've come a far... Who's to say that's not true? It still, it still is the case, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, uh, Apollo was doing that uh, to the Trojans yeah. in the uh, 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 Odyssey. Or at least one of those. Yeah. So, you know, what there's is precedent to God. That's how God communicates the plague, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think, I think Dr. Fauci says something like that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's on the, the fact sheet that he read in the last <laughs> press briefing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for tonight. Uh, you know, check out the play games we said and just hopefully you found something interesting about this or perhaps it impedes us to research something. So, I don't know. You boys got anything else to add? No. Nah. If not, I think we'll go back to our bunker, uh, bunkers that are, uh, you know, reinforced against the plague. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Keep safe out there. Be pure. <laughs> be clean. And we'll catch you next time. Well, I'm giving into uh, hedonism a bit. So, uh, uh, in, yeah. in good tradition. Listen, alcohol definitely kills germs. That's a fact. You can't argue with it. I hope you're keeping yourself busy with something. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been keeping myself busy growing my beard. Indeed. I feel you. It's lustrous, voluminous. All right. Bye, everybody. Cheers. Thank you for joining the Lost Signals Games and Gaming Culture. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows and more, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates.